Hi, this is Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today we're going to look at some techniques for using embossing powders with your images from the Graphics Fairy Premium Member Site to make beautiful crafts and projects. If you're like me, your introduction to embossing powders was very basic. Rubber stamp with a, an embossing stamp pad and a well-worn heat gun on a piece of paper or card. So we're going to look at that because even though it's really basic, it's always gorgeous. And I've made a couple of tags using that super basic technique. Now, I printed these tags on preformed tags from a bundle called Delicate End Papers. And I really like using these kinds of papers because even though they're very pretty, they're simple and they're subtle, and they add a nice background and underpinning, but they don't overwhelm your star, which is the stamp. They come preformed like this. You just print it, cut them out, and then I add them to a little bit of a heavier paper for some oomph. I also went to the beekeeping bundle and printed up a page that is was like a zoological print of bees and um, cut it into quarters and again added it to some heavier paper and then I took a honeycomb stencil and a light gold embossing powder. And when I added it to the B note card and heated it up, it gave a very burnished effect. You see, very slightly 3D raised, but also burnished. And uh, this would be terrific in an insect themed journal or project. Until recently, I had not used clear embossing powder until I was at a rummage sale last fall and there were several containers of it all for $5. And I couldn't just leave them there, could I? So I did buy them and found some techniques for using the clear embossing powder. And this is one that is uh, addictive and that is making faux enamel for ornaments. And what I've done here is I started out with some butterflies from one of the many butterfly bundles at the premium member site. And these are also preformed. You just print them, cut them, pre-steamed punked for you. And then you add a layer all over it of the clear embossing powder. When you heat that up, it turns into a, a glassy like finish that is very much like rosin or enamel. After the first layer cools, you can add a little bit more of a colored embossing powder. Heat that up and then, again, you're still going to have that original image, but you're gonna have more interest and texture. Texture, sorry. Um, this I hand cut from a print from the Antique Sheet Music Bundle. And you can see the same thing. I added uh, the, the glass-like finish with the clear embossing powder, a little sparkle, and then a cord. Now with this, you can use it as an ornament, maybe even a pendant. But I'm not really the ornament type myself, so I suspect that this is going to end up in a bit of mixed media one of my uh, shadow boxes because it does have a distinct 3D effect. So it would lend itself well to some assemblage. And finally, the clear embossing powder is a great way to make these reverse relief pieces. 
I like to start with these using some papers from the um, script ephemera bundles or uh, this is from one of the blank pages and parchment bundles and it's a foxed page. Just print that up. It's already grunged for you. And the reason I like these again is like the end papers. They're subtle but they add interest that a white page just doesn't have. You're going to take your grungy page and add your stencil with some clear embossing powder. When you heat the clear embossing powder, it's going to raise up, but it's going to be completely clear. And to get the relief, to get the contrast, you need to then color the page. So you want to paint right over your page, your stenciled page, and everything's going to take color except for the clear embossing powder, which is going to remain and allow some of that beautiful rusty grunge to show through. Very subtle, a lot of texture. You can use a watercolor, an ink. I've used a distressed ink, I just colored right over it. Now you can use these scraps in a lot of ways. As you know, I make Altoid tins and this piece I cut just for that. So then it can now go and be a background and I can add something in front of it for some extra 3D. The scraps are also great fun and beautiful. And I, I actually make up pages like this and then tear them into these freeform shapes, which I can then use in my journal work or collage work because they're a very good way to fill up space and add interest to a page like this. So your junk journals, illustrated journals, or perhaps uh, collage scrapbooking. They're a good tool. And finally, I added in my journal a pocket with another page of the relief work using the clear embossing powder and one of the mussy pages. And now you have a great little place to store your tags or what you will. So there you go. Please stay tuned because in coming up soon, I'm going to do a longer um, video for the Graphics Fairy premium member site showing step-by-step -step how to make these techniques. Until then, please get up and go make something.